Okay, John presentation number three. Plan for today, we would recap the symbology of light and darkness, which we left last time. And then we would continue to explore these symbols as well as the new symbols, new things that Apostle John would introduce to us. And uh, last time we covered chapter one, verses one to five, five verses. And now today I want to cover more 10 verses, verse six to 16. And last time we contrasted light from darkness, the light and the life. We talked about Zoe life, that is eternal life, life aeonian, and then opposite is death. Now, in him was Zoe life, and life was light of men. So the life somehow is transported to us through this vehicle called light from the source that is Son of God or Lagas, and it reaches every person, every man and woman. And this light is intended to bring life. And we see more conditions and more information about how this light transports the life from source to the destination. And we also learned life and light both symbolize the truth or gospel because the gospel shines on the people which brings life, which is also light. So that we had a verse last time we went through and then we also have discussed day as an illusion for this light. We are called children of day and children of light while we have devil on the other side and the devil is darkness opposing light and devil has inherited death and then he wants to distrib distribute his death to everybody and he does it through false go gospel and there is no one false go gospel whichever is not true gospel is false gospel so he has a bigger range of his falsehood and then he is also called night and his children are called children of night so the day on the left hand side all these things belong to god and his son on the right hand side these belong to devil and his children so we have two contrasting kingdoms and you have kingdom of light and kingdom of darkness. And these two are invisible kingdoms. It is not like a kingdom of, uh, say, uh, kingdom of Jordan. Jordan has a king and where you have definite boundaries, you can't visit that kingdom. These are beyond physical, they are spiritual. So some of these nuances are addressed as we progressively make our way through the Gospel of John. Let's pick up where we left. And John, first chapter still, verse six to 11 in this slide. Now, first five verses, God, John, Apostle John describes at a very high level and it makes a prof makes profound theological statements in first five verses. Those are like very high level and from the vantage point of heaven and from God's perspective, the things are described. And that vantage point of view, Apostle John still continues, but the scene shifts to earth and especially the Middle East and Judea and uh, house of Judah, where the story pick, is picked up and God prepares a man called John. This is not Apostle John. This is John the Baptist. God prepares him to bear witness, to prepare the way 
for arrival of Messiah, his son. So there was a man sent from God. So it is not self sent man. He did not select or chose or decided to come and bear witness of the Yeshua or Jesus, but God prepared him. We will see some verses, how God prepared beforehand this particular person. And uh, it's fascinating to study just John the Baptist. And the same came for a witness. So witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him or through his witness might believe. So we are introduced to two important key words, the witness and then belief. These are closely interrelated. We will see that shortly. And he clarifies Apostle John when he's writing the gospel, he wants to make this statement. He that is referring to John the Baptist was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. The light was son of God, Yeshua, and John the Baptist was not the light because there are some people, this is remember 90 AD, second generation Christians, and you have various factions even among Christians. Some did still believe in John the Baptist and they were kind of uh, more holding on to John the Baptist rather than Christ, which has already come and crucified and resurrected. And uh, he wants to make that statement, don't exhort John the Baptist, don't look to him because he is not that light. He just happens to bear witness of that light, but the light itself is a different entity that is son of God. That is the statement, he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. So this is an interesting word, witness or the testimony that you, for that light, so the light is transported from source to destination and light is also life and life is also true gospel. And you need a vehicle to transport this light, to transport this truth. That's where the witness comes, the testifying and witnesses have the role. They carry that light, but they are not light. The source is always the Lagos. And that was the true light coming back to the Lagos. Lagos was the true light, which lightens every man that cometh into the world. So in Greek, the, the sentence is understood differently. Uh, that was the true light. And then you can put parenthesis begin, which lightens every man parenthesis close, that cometh into the world. In English, that cometh in, into the world, we usually apply to every man. But in Greek, this is applied to the first class. That word, that the logos was the true light, which comes into the world, which also lightens every man. That is the nuance. And next two verses would uh, clarify this matter further. And he that was Lagos was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. So the Lagos is the person who came into the world. He was not of the world. He was away outside of the world, but he stepped into the world. And he came to his own and his own received him not. And uh, most people believe this is referring to house of Judah, Judea, that he has come to his own, but his own received him not. And uh, you can disagree with me in, on this verse because it is kind of a matter of interpretation and matter of uh, harmonizing with other scriptures. So it does not concretely tell at this point 
who are his own so it is subject to subject to disagreement and uh, let's go and go through the other verses but as many as received him because last slide we were talking about and he came to his own his own received him not the judea as a whole jews as a whole received him not actually they rejected him and then scriptures also tell that they who crucified him even the roman soldiers executed the act of crucifixion but according to gospels according to the epistles uh, the blame shifts on them and we have to properly understand this if we believe that this is jews and his own jews received him not it is a general statement that means majority of jews did not receive him majority rejected him but there is always exception to this statement there are some jews did believe uh, especially disciples bulk of them are jews and uh, there are other women and uh, which have believed in him and uh, so there is exception to the rule and next verse he actually talks about that he makes a good statement that that a high level statement his own received him not but some did receive even in judea now he talks about them but as many as received him so this small minority as many as received him to them the him is lagas to them gave he that is lagas gave power or authority to become sons of god even to them that believe on his name so he introduces uh in addition to witnessing and believing now he introduces the concept of children of god sons of god so there is a relationship between god and us who believe so there is a family background and family like relationship that is introduced because of something that is happening because of lagas and believing in lagas or lagas name that is starting a new relationship with god as father and children the word sons in greek is actually technon that is children of god and this also clarifies verse 13 clarifies 12 it is not that just we decide and believe in son of god there is something supernatural happening from the invisible world around us uh which were born because you have to be born to be children of someone you were born to your mother and your father and you became their children so the birth is the beginning of that relationship when you were born here it talks about another birth and this birth is different from your physical birth this is second birth we will explore it more when we come to john third chapter and these were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of god so this eliminates lots of uh, things like altar calls and uh, put your hands on tv screen when the preacher preaches uh, all those kind of things are eliminated it is not your decision to be born somebody else decided that is god according to will of god the whole process kicks in this is behind the scenes you are not born of the blood blood is blood lines it is not the your physical genealogy not of blood nor of the will of the flesh 
a man does not decide and decide to be born it this is true even in the physical realm you don't decide and be born right before you knew you are already born to your parents so same thing here the will of flesh nor will of man but of god and the world that is cosmos was made so sorry the word the word lagas and the lagas was made flesh and dwelt among us and there are no brackets in the greek manuscript these are inserted by translators so i would i would recommend that you ignore these parentheses brackets so the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth so we were introduced to two words grace and truth john that is john the baptist bore witness of him that is lagas and cried because john the baptist was sent to bear a witness of lagas ahead of lagas even before lagas arrived on scene john the baptist was sent first so he bore witness of that lagas and cried cried out it is not one time crying have been crying out and telling people saying this was he of whom i spoke he that comes after me is preferred before me for he was before me so even though he chronologically comes after me but he is before me he existed before me he is greater than me there are several nuances here which john apostle john tries to communicate the person who comes first is greater than the person who comes later in the sense your father is always greater than you in judean and eastern culture and you can never be greater than your father and your father can never be greater than your grandfather so that's how the whole thinking and since lagas arrived late after the john the baptist you should not be thinking along those lines because he existed before me this kind of thought uh, john the baptist was explaining to the crowds when he was crying out and he begins to introduce the messiah the long awaited messiah and it was prophesied this prophet would suddenly come among you and um, he came all of a sudden in fact there were like after the last book of old testament there was a long gap almost about 400 years and people were waiting some last day, last interest in waiting for messiah and they have lots of troubled conditions and romans were ruling over them and herod was not a jew himself he was ruling and uh, he is taking control of temple and lots of political skirmishes and they are losing their identity and there is there was confusion and they were hoping messiah would come and restore glory to the house of juda and and at that time 400 years lapsed and there was no prophecy nor vision from the lord and suddenly john the baptist starts and he starts his ministry and john the baptist comes with full credentials he was son of a, a priest that is tribe of levi and son of aaron and then everybody knows his father and mother elizabeth and they kind of uh, with good good credentials and his teaching and his preachings were fascinating and then he was preaching repentance to the house of israel or house of juda and at that time uh, he has more credentials than lagas which came by 
and lagas is like nobody he was a carpenter's son a lowly person and he doesn't have big big genealogical credentials but john uh, john the baptist has to introduce him here and and of his fullness his fullness in the context is lagas fullness have all we received grace for grace this is john apostle john in inserting this statement and these are the verses we would cover and go verse by verse uh, and ex- explore in detail what's happening verse 6 there was a man sent from god whose name was john this is identified as john the baptist the same came for a witness that is greek martyria from where we get martyr and we also get the word english word mature in order to bear witness that is to testify or to confess or to represent you have a wide range of meanings for this word martyria and you profess and confess certain thing of which you have become witness so and witness can just be acknowledging and telling other person sometimes living what you believe with full convictions and sometimes your your conviction is so strong that you are even prepared to die for the for the for the belief you have for the witnessing that you are witnessing about so that's where we get the english word martyr you die you lay down your life for witnessing so witnessing can be very powerful uh, even though we might sometimes think it is very very light word it doesn't require or demand anything from us in fact it demands a lot and this is closely tied up to belief now continuing uh, let me read the same came for a witness that is john the baptist came for a witness martyria that he might bear witness of the light that is lagas that all men through him might believe so this is the this is the end goal of witness and uh, and he was not the light but he was a carrier of that light through the witness when you witness or testify about god or his son you are doing the witness you are testifying that god is true and god has sent his son you are testifying to that fact and you are also testifying that zoe life is in his son and you and i can receive that life because of the because of the abundant favor and mercy of god so the witnessing in the, in the way of in the way of witnessing in the, in the path of witnessing if necessary you would lay down your life just like all the witnesses beginning from john the baptist all the apostles except apostle john believed to be to have been martyred but through their martyrdom even before their martyrdom because of their testimony and witness many people came to truth many believed and believe the people who believed also become witnesses this is a chain reaction it's it's a it's a it's an expanding uh, work verse 8 he was not that light he make sure that you understand but was sent to to bear witness of that light so he has to make sure that uh, he is not that light but he was just a witness of that light uh, going to greek here he says there is a there is a interesting construct in greek called subjunctive subjunctive is not a fact subjunctive portion of a sentence is the intent or the possibility or probability of that 
And here we have subjunctive. The same came for a witness. So John the Baptist arrived on scene, scene to witness about this lagas that he might bear witness of light. This is subjunctive. Let me introduce subjunctives. From here, this is subjunctive. So it might, he might, that is missing in English. So he came to witness that he might witness of that light and that all men through him might believe. So here at least the word might is there. So this is the intent that he would bear witness of the light. And also there is intent that all people, all Judea, all house of Judah would believe. That is the intention. And, and also the word but. Uh, in Greek, you have three or four words for but, and the strongest of them is Allah. And here, John constructs the sentence in such a way that he was not the light, he was witness of the light, but Allah was sent to bear witness of that light. So he was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of the light. So that's an interesting nuance I, I thought I would uh, tell. And this is Greek, just I'm putting in Greek so that uh, I do not <clears throat> parse it wrongly since I have Greek in front of me. And uh, Let me read Greek so that you would have uh, some familiarity how Greek sounds. Agenata anthropos, apostel menas, parateo, anama, auto Ivanes, that is John Ivanes. Hutas elten is marturian, that person came to bear witness. Hina, that is in order to, or with the intent of, marturese peri to, Photos, so he came to bear witness of that light. Hina, again, another subjunctive. Pantes pistiosin, the outu. So all might believe in him. And uk ein ekena star force. He was not that light. Allah, this is the strong but. Hina maturese peri to photos. So, so that he might bear Maturese, witness, peri, that is concerning, photos, that is light. And I want to just go through a few verses. Most of you are familiar with the verses, but let us uh, uh, revisit these verses. For anybody to bear witness, uh, for truth, for the light, for the lagas, for son of God, or for God himself, lots of preparation has to be done. And this is true for everybody. Even of Apostle Paul, who was knocked down the donkey on his journey to Damascus, uh, that is not the real beginning. Paul later on writes that he was separated from his womb to serve God, he could see the, see the things, how God mysteriously working with him all through his life. And most of us can testify to the fact that there are some mysterious things happened in your life. And you know for sure, they are not accidental, that behind the scene, God was working and preparing a people. This is supernatural, brethren. This is God and his son working, the behind, working behind the scenes and orchestrating the whole events and raising the people that can witness and that they can believe in the only begotten son of God. So look at John the Baptist. This helps us to understand uh, the work of God and the foreknowledge of God and planning of God, and especially 
the role of john the baptist is so profound and so critical that things should not go wrong because he is designated to be that vessel who bears witness to arrival for the arrival of god's son on the scene so let's pick up in luke 1 and verse uh, 11 and there appeared unto him an angel of the lord here zacharias his father of john the baptist and he was doing service in the temple uh, and there appeared unto him an angel of the lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense where they put incense they take the coals and then put incense on the coals and the whole incense fills the house they do it in the evening and the morning and they also trim the lamps in the in the in the temple and when zacharias saw him this angel he was troubled and fear fell upon him but the angel said unto him fear not zacharias for thy prayer is heard and thy wife elizabeth shall bear thee a son so he is a godly man and he was praying and very few people actually were answered uh their prayers got answered by sending a special messenger from god one is daniel and the other is zacharias and the third is roman centurion cornelius for thy prayer is heard and thy wife elizabeth shall bear thee a son and thou shall call his name john now the name also comes from god john the baptist name and elizabeth his wife was barren but after long prayers long waiting here is the news that comes as an answer to his prayers and also the purpose of god plan of god and you shall have joy and gladness after long wait and many shall rejoice at his birth for he shall be great in the sight of the lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink so he should not pervert himself with alcohol or neither wine nor strong drink this is this occurs at several places in the old testament when samson was born after a long wait this is what happens he neither drinks wine nor strong drink and he shall be filled with the holy ghost or holy spirit there is no ghost uh, that is translator's choice the underlying greek word is hegias pneuma pneuma is spirit holy spirit even from his mother's womb what a what a commission even from his mother's womb he will be filled with god's holy spirit and many of the children of israel shall he turn to the lord their god so he is instrumental in many people might believe and he shall go before him before him in this context is lagas he will go before the lagas in chronological order in spirit and power of elias that's an english um, greek uh, transliteration of elijah so he would go in spirit and power of elijah before lagas to turn the hearts of the fathers unto the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the lord this is the commission of john the baptist and after this you can go through the luke luke first chapter and second chapter and elizabeth uh, and this uh, zacharias was so joyful and uh, how could that be he just unbelievable for him what a what a blessing and uh, and he 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 kind of uh, mumbles or murmurs before the angel uh, is that is that really is it really are you really telling the truth we do it like all the time so he does that and then the angel says because you did not believe fully and you are asking like this i will close your mouth you would you would be dumb until the child is born and until you confess and give glory to the lord so his mouth is shut and nobody knows but he heard this name john 
and then later on elizabeth story his mother now elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered and she brought forth a son and her neighbors and her cousins heard how the lord has showed great mercy upon her because barren woman were would be a stigma in that culture in that society and it's a great blessing to have children and especially a son and they rejoiced with her all the family friends and it came to pass on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child and they called him called him zacharias after the name of his father so it's a tradition probably they want to name this child as zacharias and his mother answered and said no not so but he shall be called john probably she was given in the vision uh, and they said unto her there is none of thy kindred that is called by this name and they made signs to his father so then asked what do you say zacharias and how he would have him called and he asked for a writing table and wrote saying his name is john what a coincidence elizabeth wanted to name him as john and uh, zacharias his father also wanted to name his name as john and the marvel that it did and his mouth was opened immediately and his tongue loosed and he spoke and praised god so don't postpone praising god and uh, i want to show you the preparation god goes in even from your mother's womb and uh, and maturia the word witnessing is very powerful word and we should not take it lightly i want to show the breadth of this word the martyr martyrdom and revelation 6 verse 9 and when he had opened the fifth seal i saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of god they were slain for the word of god and their testimony the word testimony is greek martyria same as john the baptist mission which they held so sometimes you have to lay down your life when you are witnessing and martyria we have another english word that derived from this is mature when you are a young christian in first few months or few weeks that you begin to believe god and his son you are not ready to bear witness you have to be changed you have to be converted you have to become mature a matured man so the word mature also comes from maturia so once you are once you are begin to grow and mature you become a better witness or more complete witness and uh, john the baptist was given the holy spirit from his womb and he is prepared uh, every day and every hour for this witnessing when it is in when it was time to arrive time for lagas to arrive on scene he is already fully prepared and he is matured person and he is also doing the witness maturia and later on he also lays down his life as you know the story so that is the breadth of witness the marturia few more verses and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep commandments of god so obedience commandments they are all required and have testimony of jesus christ the marturia the same word used here for john the baptist our calling is also to bear witness of this lagas son of god as well as god and the true gospel and if necessary we should not hold back ourselves when the hour comes we should be willing even to lay down our life of course god will bring you st- give you strength and power to bear witness and the physical death does not bother you when he strengthens you when you are not ready 
all of us are afraid of physical death to lay down our lives but when the situation comes he empowers us and strengthens us just like he strengthened all the all the martyrs or all the witnesses and uh, because you are looking for zove life and this current bias life you don't you value less compared to zove life so you go to next verse and that was true light which lightens every man that comes into the world now as i discussed that was the true light which comes into the world that is that's how you should read the greek and which lightens every man this we can put it in parenthesis and he was in the world cosmos and the world was made by him and the world knew him not and he came unto his own his own received him not this is a fascinating statement even in greek and uh, there's a important uh, construction of the true light and the true is an adjective it describes the light and you can say in english light of truth a true light uh, this itself uh, tells you that lagas is the true light and it implies there is a fake light or false light that comes from the devil so you have these things uh, like the, you have two lights light 1 and light two how do you recognize which is from god and which is from devil only through word of god only through word of god it is even more important to study bible on regular basis and get familiar with with the word of god that is the only way you can detect okay so this was the true light the word for truth is aletheia this is a good good word to memorize memorize or remember aletheia and it has several deri- derivatives but the root word stem is aletheia that is truth aletheia and it comes again and again in john's gospel even other gospels the truth the truth light of truth you can say a true light which enlightens or lightens every man that comes into the cosmos which lightens every man is should be put in brackets and then that comes into the world is actually referring to this true light in greek which comes into the world and this lagas the true light was in the world he came into cosmos and the cosmos was made by him and and the cosmos knew him not and the word end in greek is kai this kai mostly translators use uh, used to translate an end uh, it can also mean it has a semantic range you can you can say even then that is the other other suggested translation for this end the light that came into the world and he was in the world but the world also was made by him and even then the world knew him not nobody knew that and the whole cosmos he created and the cosmos came into existence through him but the cosmos somehow missed him it failed to recognize him and they knew him not 
he came and crucified and resurrected and gone and before his crucifixion he gave the true gospel the truth and and the world missed it out and now not only the world but his own his own that is house of juda jews in general also did not receive him they in fact they received him not so for verse 11 we have the prophecies that yeshua jesus christ would would arrive in the lineage of tribe of juda and he would arrive in judea and here here the whole world knew him not even though god sent his son to save the world to to give eternal life this zoe to the whole world he was not sent to judea even though in the immediate circumstances circumstances in flesh and blood he was in judea but the whole program whole goal from god by sending forth his son we see him here for god for god so loved the world the agape loved that is cosmos that he that he gave his only begotten son that the that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life this is zoe aeonians so that is the plan of god to send forth his son to save the whole world but the world knew him not so this is not the time perhaps and genesis 49:10 this is the prophecy messianic prophecies that the scepter shall not depart from juda the scepter is the rod with which kings would rule so the kingship shall not depart from juda nor are the lawgiver between his feet until shiloh come and unto him shall the gathering of the people be so this is he is the king designated king this lagas king of righteousness and he is also lawgiver the two important things prophesied about this lagas pardon my handwriting it's hard to write it with cursor and scriptures clearly say that it is jews who killed jesus christ they did not receive him but moreover they went extra step they took extra step to kill them here first thessalonians 2 verse 15 who jews in the context is talking about jews in the previous verses both killed the lord jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not god and are contrary to all men so this is one scripture that affirms that they received him not his own next verse but jews as a majority rejected him and did not receive him that does not mean every jew has rejected him there are some who accepted for example there is a statement that uh, new testament makes that jews are enemies of gospel is that true for every jew no it's it's a broad statement that jews are enemies of gospel because they rejected son of god and they continue to reject him even today but those like disciples and several women of jewish descent they did receive him now this verse talks about them but as many as received him to them he gave power to become sons or children of god even to them that believe the word believe is pistuo this is the verb and on his name so whoever have believed on his name to them he gave authority to become children of god
Now the word pistuvo is belief, and the same word is used for faith. Belief is verb. Belief is verb, and faith is noun. Faith is pistis. It is noun. So it is the same thing. You when you do the action of believing, that is believing as a verb. Once you believe, you hold on to that belief. That is faith. So it is same thing in the verb form or noun form. Your believing is referred to as your belief. So the faith is also belief, and they are very very interchangeable. so this is the connection believing is the connection and the light flows from son of god which is also life which is also truth and sometimes it goes through the witnesses and the whole goal is for people to believe when you believe this light goes inside you or the truth goes inside you the starting point is belief or believing and believing on his name so this is name of son of god or lagas name and these do not believe just by their own choice they do not start this whole process the whole process would be started by god behind the scenes and father actually starts begins to call and grants you the receptors and sensitivity and actually pulls you to his son so that you you kind of get to grips with his son and then you begin to believe so on the physical layer you have witnesses like john the baptist and you have apostles and you have other teachers who would work on the physical layer but there is another layer invisible to us that is spiritual layer in which god the father and god the son both would be working actively so this is very important to understand two layer concept and we come to belief and now how about the name how do we believe on his name now other scripture also affirms this just want to go through this and then i will come back to name first john 3 verse 21 beloved if our heart condemns us not then we have confidence toward god and whatsoever we ask we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight and this is his commandment that we should believe we should believe on what on the name of his son jesus christ and other conditions love one another as he gave us commandment so here the name of jesus christ is must so you have to believe on the name and how do we understand the name there are other verses tells us we have to love his name and we have to believe in his name now psalms 511 tells us but all those that put their trust in thee rejoice let them ever shout for joy because you defend them and let them also love your name and be joyful in thee so he says love your name they also love your name and somebody can come and say oh i love his name oh yeah i love i love that name and i will name my next son uh, by the way my wife is pregnant and uh, we know that is going to be son i will name my son with this name i love this name so much well that is one way to love that name 
but is that really what god is asking you us to love a name is it the whole problem is you can love the name or hold on to the name in different varieties the extreme version is the spelling and the sound of a name this is all matters for some but if you examine scriptures it is not just limited to the how the word sounds and what are the letters and vowels vowels in the in the in the name uh, there is much more behind the name it represents the character of that person it represents office of that person it represents the purpose of that person and and so many things behind the scenes let us see a few verses i don't want you to limit yourself to just the phonetics or or the the literal name the literal name can change when bible gets translated into different languages the original name in hebrew for jesus christ was yehoshua or we get the word english word joshua so in english we should be calling him joshua or in hebrew he was yeshua to to be proper it has to be yehoshua and then it becomes yeshua in hebrew aramaic and then the verse and the scriptures when they got translated into greek septuagint they always add s and shorten it that is the greek language so yeshua becomes jesus in greek and jesus when it comes to english probably in originally we don't have ya sound in english it becomes ja ya becomes ja you become jesus it becomes jesus so it's a linguistic transliteration as bible gets translated that's how you, how you get jesus and it's it means exactly same and somebody can can come and tell us uh, there is a greek god or some pagan god who is also called zeus there is a danger of worshiping him it is not it is not as long as you know what whom you are worshiping or whom you are serving the name is just a tag but what is behind the name is profound now take an example of deception if you believe the name should be said yeshua and when devil comes and tries to seduce you would he tell would he use another name no he just use yeshua and yet deceive you on the other hand if you believe his name is jesus and then then devil comes again and introduces himself as jesus it is not just the phonetics or letters or vowels or the sound it is the spiritual signature that matters that is all you can detect based on which you can detect who is who because there is lots of impersonation and uh, lots of hijacking of the names so let us try to discern the spiritual signatures of god and his son and also spiritual signatures of devil and let us be more familiar with the word of god so that we can detect who is who who is who and we have lots of verses look thou upon me and be merciful this is psalms 119 merciful unto me as you use us to do unto those that love thy name now love thy name is not just limited to the phonetic sound because you love who god is what he stands for what his spiritual signatures are his his gracefulness his forgiveness and he is slow to anger quick to forgive abundant in mercy all these attributes constitute his name name is a tag like an umbrella it covers lots of things so all those things are embedded into this name as you can see here and isaiah 56 for thus said the lord 
unto eunuchs that keep my sabbaths and choose the things that please me take hold of my covenant even unto them i will give in mine house within my walls a place and a name better than sons and God, sons and of daughters i will give them give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off is he talking about phonetics no he will give a name better than sons and daughters and he said also he will give them an everlasting name everlasting name has more than the phonetics the sound of a word you can see few more words. a good name is rather cho- be chosen than great riches and loving favor than silver and gold so if your name is jacob you want to change it to samuel no it is not talking about name as a as a as a word that has a sound the name represents much more a name a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches because name represents a way of life that you live revelation 3:12 here yeshua jesus promises him that overcomes i will make him a pillar in the temple of my god and he shall go no more out and i will write upon him the name of my god now he is not just writing the name literally that word a name of the city of my god that is new jerusalem which is new jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my god and i will write new name upon him my new name so how many names are written it is not the words that are appended to your name it is office offices and the character and the responsibilities the whole all these things are embedded under this umbrella called name and finally no man can come to me uh, this is i want to address the next verse which were born not of blood nor will of the flesh nor will of man but will of god it is not the blood that flows in your veins that determines nor the will of flesh nor will of man he is excluding all of these things for your second birth this is by will of god it is god who initiates it is god who orchestrates it is god who begins the whole process for you and that's what the other verses say john 6 verse 40 44 no man can come to me that means some people cannot decide and come to me it is not will of man not by will of man not by will of flesh not of blood whose blood is flowing in your veins does not matter no man can come to me except the father which has sent me draw him this is a profound verse we will come back to this father decides who to call and who not to call and whomever he calls he prepares them and brings them to his son and i will raise him up at the last day and then when father brings a person to his son there's lots of preparation goes just like john the baptist it is written in the prophets they shall be all be taught of god every man therefore that has heard and learned of the father cometh unto me so father begins to teach many people including me believe it starts almost in the womb even your parents are part of this preparation and then when you when you are born he carefully orchestrates and teaches you and teaches you about himself and his son and brings you to his son draws him that's why it is not related to your blood flesh or will of man john 114 and the word was made flesh socks and they dwelt among us and we beheld his glory sorry this is not charis this is doxa 
This is, let me strike it down just in case. This is doxa. And the glory as of the only begotten of the father, only, only begotten son of the father, full of grace and truth. Again, Elithia comes back. This grace is charis. So full of grace, charis or favor and truth, they came from this lagas. And the word itself here, the word or lagas were made flesh. He was made into flesh. So that means to be made into flesh, he must not be flesh before he was made. He was spirit. He was spirit. The word for spirit is pneuma. This pneuma became Sark's flesh. This is an important thing. He stepped out of eternity and became into temporal, physical flesh and blood life. So Sark's was made into flesh and dwelt among us. The word dwelt is skinao. This comes from skinne. Skinne is same word used for tabernacle, the ancient tabernacle, Old Testament. So he dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten son of God and full of grace and truth. And uh, the word begotten is monogenes, only begotten. That means you are the only son and uh, this is not exclusively used for son of God, uh, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. It is used for uh, other people in other circumstances also in scripture, uh, even though it might carry more weight and more specific nuances when it refers to son of God. Just want to show you monogenes is also used in, in a widow whose son was... Uh, uh, this is next verse. We will come back to the widow's son, Monogenes. I think it's next son. And uh, he declared he is full of truth. Son of God, Lagas, is full of truth. He is filled with truth and favor full of grace, favor, and truth. That is actually coming from father. And he fills his son with truth and favor. And he sends forth him as the embodiment of all truth. And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, aletheia, same Greek more. word, and life, this is zoe. No man comes unto the father but by me. And if he had known me, you should have known my father. And from henceforth, you knew him and have seen him. He is the full representation of the father for us because he is monogenes of the father. And verse 15 to 16, this is the last verse. John bore witness of him, that is Lagas, and cried saying, this was he of whom I spoke. He that cometh after me is preferred before me for he existed before me. And of his fullness have we all received grace for grace. Now, the grace for grace, an interesting statement, uh, favor from favor. So this is a growth aspect. You start with small favor from God and the favor keeps on increasing as you grow in favor towards him. So scripture says, grow in knowledge and grace of Lord Jesus Christ. The word grace is favor. So as you are growing in his knowledge, you are also growing in the favor. We have similar expression, faith to faith. For therein the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. So you begin with smaller faith. And your faith also grows. These are like dynamic things. 
you can't stand where you stand today tomorrow you should make progress it's very dynamic in nature that brings us to the end of the presentation i think it we went little bit overboard i will return the control to don well that was a definitely thorough thank you any questions comments um there were some of the phones were uh, making noise so i muted them oh yeah can you hear me don yes i hear you on your laptop yes um uh, tagore thanks for bringing up uh the issue that the name isn't really so important um I, I relate this story quite often, and many of you, sorry if I'm repeating it, but my name is actually Laureen, L-A-U-R-E-E-N, um, but I've been called many things, Lori, Laura, Lorraine, <laughs> um, but I know that they're speaking to me, and I know they're making the best effort, so it's it's not a big deal. And I think in many ways, Yeshua, Jesus, Yahshua, whatever want to call him salvation king of kings um he knows we're doing our best and so the folks that are so emphatic that you have to say things a certain way um i think are kind of missing the point we're we're all going to get new names in fact um i know you touched on revelation 3 i think the other one's in 13 maybe um that he gets a white stone with a new name on it that only he knows um, yeah. So if it's a name that only he knows, what's the big deal that we can't pronounce the one that he's got now? So just saying. But thank you for bringing that up. Uh, you're welcome. Actually, uh, he probably knows that we, have, we would have controversy around these names. Uh, he made one significant, uh, I, I see it as a leap in, in model prayer. He does not use any names for God. He says, our father in heaven. I think that's what I wanted to comment. We, I heard a, um, well, it was actually Mike Waters and I were sitting around discussing this. And he goes, actually, the name that we should be using for, and I forgot what it was. But it means Papa. You know, if you're having a relationship, he's your father, he's your daddy, he's the one that you look up to. And it should be that. That should be uh, the intent or the idea of, you know, establishing a relationship, maintaining that close of a relationship. Now, if, you, if you're someone that had a bad relationship with your, with your dad, well, then that might be a little difficult, but. Um, it should be more personal one on one instead of getting into the uh, everyone's got their own thing. <laughs> I just don't get into all these different names. Any other comments? 